So how does Jesus address and deal with this desire to covet? <coughs> really practically. He knows God's word. He has God's word in his heart. And he uses God's word as a defense to himself when temptation comes. You know, I uh, personally have always had a harder time memorizing scripture. That's just how I'm built. It was harder for me. Uh, I've been fortunate that we have a program we do with our kids that uh, if you could teach a four-year-old scripture, you could, you'll learn it yourself while you're teaching a four-year-old it. And it just it works for me. And so when things come and tempt you, for instance, for me, I always think of uh, John Fort. I'm going to get the address wrong. He came so we have a life and have it to the full, or more abundantly, you might have it memorized. John 10:10. 10, 10. He came so we have life and have it to the full, or more abundantly. So when I see like that commercial for that new truck, he came so I might have life and have it to the full. When. Uh, I have to discipline my children, which would, I'd rather get my teeth drilled. I'm sure all the parents in this room understand that. If you love your children, you'll discipline them. That's what the scripture says. Suddenly, I'm not tempted to take the easy way out because my father has said, you love your kids, you say no. Jesus knew the word intimately. And so when sin and temptation came his way, he had it so in his heart that it protected him from the spirit of the world. In our culture today, we have this, like I said, this Marxian, communistic, socialistic idea that says you deserve this, or they have this privilege. And that's the common current word, is privilege. And it's gotten into how we see each other. Uh, there is stats that say, well, just, just, just let's be real clear. Let's just bring it down to husbands and wives real quick. I'm aware of a trend in churches where homeschooling moms are very conservative and have big families, will be in communities where they'll talk to people online and somebody will say, somebody will get a divorce. And there are legitimate reasons for divorce, I believe that. But what they'll do then is they'll say, you too should get one. You're also unhappy. What they'll do is they'll try to put their unhappiness on the, each other. And the lie that has been happening, I've been talking to a couple pastors, this one pastor's talked to, he's had 30 different occasions across his ministry in the last five years where this thing has crept in. Where people will tell, where some women will try to tell their friends, your husband is really just oppressing you. Your husband is taking advantage of you. You deserve time for yourself. Don't you want to take care of yourself? What about how you feel? You notice how I'm focusing on one sport in particular? And this little spirit gets in and it lies to you and it says, you're being abused. You're being taken advantage of. And there'll be men who are hardworking men married to this one lady for 20, 30 years and they're in pastoral counseling because their marriage is on the rocks. And they'll ask the husband, what are you doing wrong? And sometimes there's something there, but sometimes it's because something crept in to the garden and so we need to guard our hearts against these little lies that get in to upset the apple carts of our families. The Bible says this, love is patient and kind. Love does not boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. And so when these little eyes creep into your life, I wrote down here, sneaky communist thinking, because that's what this is, really. When these little satanic lies creep in, 
when you read 1 Corinthians, it's basically talking about Jesus. This is the character of him. When we're dealing with one another in our relationships, you're being taken advantage of. Wait a second. Love is patient. Wait a second. My kids are great the way they are. I don't need their kids. Love does not envy or boast. Their marriage might be great for them, but this is the one God has me in. This is the relationship I have with this person. It is not irritable or resentful. Ooh, that's a big one right there. I could tell you when this week when I've been sick, it's really easy to say, Sarah, not right now. It's my daughter. Not right now. Or getting up literally hurt. And some of you understand that better than I do about everything every day of your life. It'd be really easy to be just an irritable jerk. But love isn't that way. It's not resentful. And so when these little lies come in and they try to make you resent your husband, your wife, know what that is. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. You ever meet those people who laugh when somebody gets hurt? Or clap? I, I once dropped a plate in a restaurant and a whole table clapped. Um, makes you think, like, what's going on in there that they would laugh at somebody's misfortune? <laughs> Love bears all things. Also, I forgot this, but rejoices with the truth. Last year, when the Roe v. Wade thing was overturned, um, there was a thing where pastors were saying, don't talk about this. There are people who are hurt in your church over this. And meanwhile, here at Bee Ridge, we, had, we praised the Lord for a good half the message and all of the worship that day. Because we rejoice in the truth that life matters. Love bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Little eyes try to get in to make you not bear the hardships, not believe what's been said. It makes you assume at the jump the worst. It hopes all things. I don't know, maybe some of our senior saints in here who've been married for more than 10 minutes might be able to tell you that it's not always an easy road. Maybe you've just been in relationships your whole life, you know, even with your children, it's not all springs, springs and daisies and rainbows, but sometimes it's moments where you're like, I earned every gray hair on my head right now. Love never ends, which by the way, it's because Christ never ends. Coveting gets into your family, these sneaky little lies, and they make you covet what you don't have inside your relationships and make you look for things outside yourself. Outside, like, you know, I can't get that from my husband. I might as well see if I could get that from somebody else's. I can't get that from my wife. Maybe I could get it on my computer. It's not good. And so just real quick, men, your job here is to always clear up and be clear with your wife as to what you mean. Be clear with what you're actually meaning or saying. Um, don't assume so much. Uh, I, we, our secretary, her name is uh, Miss Jan. She says, I failed the degree in mind reading. So that always helps me because it helps me remember. Let me explain what I mean. We are not mind readers. Your husband, your wife is not a mind reader. Sin has made communication difficult. So if you need to, ask again, and ask again, and ask again. And if you get irritated because you've explained